already executable. Even economy or ahead economy? If you're equal, it's still Even. tough for the Yuzong to get wow, close to Brody. Crazy. So exactly, with with that now behind our backs, I don't know if uh, if that's still true or not. We'll have to see in game. But yeah, the Claude is definitely still a safer pick. I'll have to agree with that with the Purify or the Sprint or even the Flicker. We've seen so many variants of this yep. Claude. Even with the different emblems, QC or Brave Smite, if you really need additional sustain. Good points from both Ghani and Mirko. But, but as well, it also has that synergy with the Luo Yu. We have seen the diversion wave clear you can use with the BMI from the Claude. That could always give you that global map pressure to clear up the, the, the lanes and the waves. Get, get the split push going. For the final two bands was Hayabusa and Arlet with a Baxia and a Kai. Now it's for Onik to pick up. What seems like left off is a roamer and an XP later for Luffy. And he will pick up the Ruby. This Ruby could still go both flexed for Onik. Technically both Ruby and Fredrin could still be flexed right yeah. now. You never know, maybe he'll pick up another assassin, a Lancelot. That's ah. kind of tough to pull off here against the Yuzong here with Angela. But hey, never say never when it's Onik, Yeb, Adi, and Kai. Ruby. <laughs> for Aura, I feel like they have rounded themselves up with quite a solid draft. You have the cover for the hair, yep. you have the hard guard, you have a lockdown, the dive as well from the Yuzong, BDF, and Furious Dive. Now for Aura, they want to conclude their draft with something strong. Roger? Maybe a strong jungler, or Roger could also work in the jungle, but it's going to be Yaoi's Ooh. The Yaoi special. And last but not least, they will pick up for themselves Marches. a Martis. This will disable all the CC that is going to be pounded towards Gugun. Very different, right? Season 12, very popular and also very... An okay win rate here on this Martis, but the season is <laughs> very low. Oh. And there you go. Yeah. Nolan, Jungle, Fredrin, EXV. Oh man, I, I'm a, I'm a Onyx. solid hater of the Fredrin XP, but it seems for Onyx they somehow are able to make it work a lot of these situations. They're able to just find the real way to make these compositions work. But with the Nolan this time, it's already quite different, right? You're pretty vulnerable to the Cho as well. Even technically the die from the Yuzong and the Herod, when you go for these all-ins, there's so much sustain on Aura. It's gonna be kind of tough for Nolan to choose who to target in these team fights. Technically, who are you really gonna be assassinating here, right? Maybe the Angela, but the Angela will definitely be a bit further back. And if you take a look at the Aura counter index and lineup rating, it does favor them. So we'll see in the Land of Dawn if the execution can play a bigger part than the lineup rating. Can the Sky Kings strike twice and conclude this series or Will the red fiery dragons fight back and fly high? Back to the land of dawn we go for game number two of Aura Esports against Onik. Land of dawn, here we go Welcome with the, the dragons and wings clipped. Will they be able to withstand the pressure from the Sky Kings? Let's see what will Gugan do on this Martis. Again, very, very rare this season to see a yeah. Martis in the jungle. Will he be able to pull it off? I speculate this would be a very quite tough early game for Kyrie to play with the Nolan, especially you have the tanks up in the Yuzong and the Martis as well, just kind of like out damages you in the early game. Yeah. In the clear department as well though, the Nolan should still have an advantage. That's one of the strengths of this Nolan. Mm -hmm. Really, really flash clear. And let's take a look at the emblems here. So far, still very, very classic, but Kabuki, ooh, interesting choice here. Inspire and the Festival of Blood. Trying to out-sustain Onyx, something that we were talking about. The Nolan is going to have a tough time, especially with the sustained aura already have without the Festival of Blood on Kabuki. Now with the Festival of Blood, he's going to have a better time. And Gugun on the smartest. You're right, Ghani. We haven't seen this pick a lot. And I think for Gugun especially, this is the first time mm. in Season 13 that we see him on it. And it's on an Impure Rage, which is another interesting choice to go for. So I believe it does look like Gugun wants to go for a full utility build, a full tank build maybe. Maybe the, the the most he can do with some damage would be a Fury Hammer. And then he will just play purely to be the sandbag and maybe to execute when Onik get low. For Onik though, Lutpi up top under pressure for three members. Yaoi could get caught, but he's fine. Fine and dandy because the kill pressure early on from Onik with the Ruby and Nolan is quite strong, especially that Nolan 
able to get level 4. They're eyeing towards this top lane. Sans is there to back them up. Turtle spawn, this could be the next menu for both teams. They march their way towards the turtle pit. Here's a, a future problem thought, right, for Aura. Do you think that this composition has enough wave clear here? I don't see, apart from Harris, but let's see in, in mid push, Yaoi will be forced to use the flicker early. Now, Gugun will find the first neutral oh, objective. Good Petrify will force Lupin to use the flicker, but Keyboy will be caught in the first blood. This time, Aura will find the first blood. First blood for Gugun, and they get the turtle as well. So that's a net win for Aura. They try to take charge and control of this early game. It does seem like Aura are trying to fight fire with fire. A big problem in their comp would be, yes, that wave clear, but you won't need wave clear if you're winning in the early game and snowballing. If you're the ones being proactive on the map, that was what they were lacking in game number one. And at this point, they're just trying to beat Onik at that game of the early game snowball. Onik, on the other hand, has taken a step back from the Brody, from that snowballing composition to now a bit of a safer comp with that late game insurance on the Claude. So for Onik, it's a bit more of let's wait for that mid game, for that power spike to hit on our Claude, and then we will take the fights. In the early game, we won't commit as much. And that's why we, we saw an instant disengage from Onik. Only one member picked off and the rest acted on it. Just gave Keyboy up for the sacrifice. This composition does kind of like looks to excel and snowball in the early to mid game later on. So yeah, the wave clear might not be as relevant because you have every potential Whoa. lead. Oh, Keyboy is able to dodge Yaoi. A little taunt there, but all is good. They're trying to contest this purple buff from the hands of Aura. And now how does Fredrin approach this? But a kick from Keyboy towards yeah, Keyboy. It was deflected earlier, but Keyboy with his dexterity was able to find the flicker and out of that sticky situation. It's a lot of confidence from Keyboy in the series, especially in the first game. Now to the second game, he's been able to just maneuver so freely around the map. Uh, very different approach here. CW actually with the first item, Corrosion Scythe. Knows that he won't be in the lane too much. He actually wants to participate in these team fights, knowing where, that the Corrosion Scythe build basically is for the additional utility in the early game. Let's see how CW takes this because there's no lane swap for now. They want to go for it. We have Dragon already committed. Oh, Gugun will secure the second neutral objective. Oh, good Petrify on towards Kyrie. Kyrie. The damage will come oh. through. One oh. HP run with the life steal secures it. And now our Aura, they are looking for more potentially here in the bottom side of the map. Shaman 4 is invested, but it seems like Onik, they will not commit more here. They will just back away. Aura, but still looking for potential angle with Gugun. Also in the vicinity, 3v2, 4v2, potentially with the diversion play to Onik. Looking for backup with Sans now, joining the fray. But it seems like Aura, they just want the turret. Wow. Yao is able to look for the proactive plays and the pressure as well. Just him shadowing his carry. He's trying to just let them shove in the wave and get the tower. Or the turret rather. It's able to just bait out the players of Onik and their diversion. Usan especially. Yeah, another win for Aura because they got the turtle and a kill. They traded a turret as well. Good conversion. But Onik still were able to find ways to nullify the early snowball from being a big one, right? It's still just a 1,000 gold lead. This can build up again for Aura if they continuously just look for these fights and if Yaoi is able to find those big picks again. But if Onyx stay at this kind of stalemate with it only being a 1k gold lead, it's going to be super, super valuable for Onyx. Again, their power specs are going to hit a bit later, and Aura, that threat that Ghani mentioned in the later stage where their wave clear isn't too good, will come back to bite them if they don't get this big lead fast. I feel like Onik is so good and trying to just keep up and stabilize this lead. Aran is in the bush. He's spotted out. They could engage on him. Whoa! Smells Aran. He smells a dragon. Now he is flying with the Black Dragon from Blazing Duet Invested. The with the help of oh. Yowie. Where Dragon is well. Now CW will be the first oh. one to fall alongside wow. Kyrie. Good recovery as Keyboy will fall as well. Good comeback here by Aura. They are not messing around in the second game. Aran is the embodiment of the dragon. Two dragons, three dragons even, letting Aran win that fight and prolong it to, for a backup to come.
Goosebumps 1v4. Aran won it with the help of the Angela. Wow, man. Don't give this guy the Terizla. Give him damage dealers, man. Give him playmaking heroes. Because, my goodness, what was that? Wow. He was able to just kind of survive that little gank, that little skirmish, that little pickoff that Ooh. Alec was looking towards him. The diversion play was there. He was trapped in no man's land. And the hard guard, though, we gotta, pro we gotta give props to Yeskiel as well for saving Aran in that scenario. But the backup from Aura was also too good. CW can be stuck here. Oh no, we have Dragon committed now with diversion. the cover of Keyboy. Look, P and Sans with the teleportation. But it seems like another structure in the top side will fall. Onik has no anti-region. That's why Yu Zong and Angela just wreaks havoc against composition, against Onyx composition as of now. Yeah, I mean, only the Fredrin has it down in his ice now, and uh, Lutpi hasn't been really active around the map. He's been now getting more game time around the map with the help of Diversion, but he was actually the one trading on the other side previously, and now it does get very, very tough for Onyx. They, Aura, have been able to build up a 2.2k gold lead, and with the consistency of how Yaoi finds these picks, yeah. Onik are going to have to work some overtime shifts here to try to work out where Yaoi is, how to go in, because even CW with a Purify, Aura's got those timers down to a T. They timed it really, really well, catching CW up top earlier as well. And if it continues, again, just baiting all these Purifies will be very, very valuable for Aura, because we were talking about how Claude was the safer pick compared to Brody. If that Purify is burnt out, he's actually a, a riskier pick then the Brody, because he doesn't have the early game that Brody does to withstand a lot of these initiations from Aura. This Claude, of course, kind of like high risk, high reward. I mean, it is lower risk compared to the Brody, but then again, like what Mirko explained, the Claude does not really excel when it does not really, you know, reach that power spike it is longing for. Now, Lord is kickstarted by Aura. This could lure Onik inside. Keep boy with the conceal. They might go for this. Now when four is committed, look P. Now you see him, now you don't. No, Keep boy now will be the next target. Flickers is not gonna save him much. Aranda <laughs> will secure the kill. Secures the mega. Seven and oh for Aura. This game, such a crazy series. Deja vu. It's like the first game, but this time, the tables have turned. It's Aura. The driver's seat and a run taking charge. Seven kills, and he has four kills to his name. 4 0 and 3. And Keyboy can't really soak in any damage. He already has a Dreadnought armor, but that's definitely not enough. Not now, at least. CW is still quite far away, actually. It's quite close to the Golden Staff, but again, it might be too late because if you take a look at the Harith, Divine Glaive built up. So he chose to go for the Divine Glaive instead of the usual Holy Crystal as the third item. And now, if he gets that Holy Crystal, the Frederick won't even be able to tank it up. He still has Dominant's Ice. Okay, so the Ruby Keyboy is actually gone for the Athena, so he wants to try to soak in some of that damage from Kabuki, but still, I don't think Kabuki will be targeting him. He'll be looking for the other members, or even just the turrets as of, as of right now. 4.4k gold lead, utilizing the gold lead really well, Aura. On it with a good defense, but the more map pressure the Aura have, the less and less that threat of that wave clear will have on Aura, and Aura can just completely control the map with that show. It has been very hard for Ludpi to just maneuver in the team fights. I mean, with the Fredrin XP, you know, he's very limited to his options. He's trying to soak up the damage, but the damage from Aura has just been immense. Yaoi looking for another pick. Ooh, cancel. Yeah, this might be a mistake by Yaoi. Onik responds very well. Now Gogun will run for the hills as Onik, they will reclaim. The purple and Onik finally gets a first kill, gets the first kill on the board. Oh, oh run. diversion play! Instantly adding one to the board again. Aran evaporates. There is damage from Onik when they ganged up S4, and Aran does not have the regen with the hard guard. So that is their window frame. Just take down this big dragon. And that's the best possible target that Onik could actually hope for. A shutdown. The only guy with a bounty. They get that shutdown. Was that on Sans? That no, was it was on actually on Keyboy. So, Keyboy. you know, the shutdown was great, the target was great, but the fact that Keyboy got the gold, it makes it not as worth it. Still, 
Very valuable though for Onik because they are able to withstand this early to mid uh, onslaught from Aura. But yeah, Aura needs to be a little bit more clinical when it comes to those initiations, when it comes to those pickoffs, because one small mistake could lead up to a lot of mistakes, knowing that the Lo Yi can put on crazy flanks around the map. Yaoi constantly looking for the pickoffs, but sometimes it just bites him from the back because Onik is just more than prepared. I mean, there's, there were a lot of disengages from them. And then they would turn the tides around and just re-engage back towards Yaoi. So Yaoi needs to be careful on which pickoffs he want to he wanna look for because sure, sometimes he can fly from behind. He can look for the important pickoffs, maybe towards CW, but then CW might step too far. He's fine. All good so. because he has the BMI. Now, of course, towards the Lord they go. This could be another brawl for the Lord. Yeah, it seems like Onik. They will have the arsenal to contest this enhanced lord. Top side still in favor of Aura though. And Onik, they will take their time as well to find the right angle to set up. And CW has already hit his power spike now. He already has the three items, the Golden Staff, the DHS, and the Corrosion. And he's just finished that Melfic Roar. Meanwhile for Kabuki, another big power spike for him too as he finished up the Holy Crystal. Fourth item in his arsenal with the Divine Glaive already built up. Onik will have to be very, very careful as to how they initiate. Because Ooh. if Yaoi catches them, Kabuki will delete them. See, it seems like topside CW will be sent. But look, P, the first one to fall now. Keyboard looking for a position. Gugun secures the Lord. Let's take a look at CW now with the BMI back. Will not be able to find anyone. It's a 1 4. No, it's a 2 4 0. For Aura. Onyx sent CW up top with the diversion and the BMI to come back because he was trying to split push. He was trying to get the side lanes going, but the fight was just engaged by Aura. So there was no damage from Onyx to try to withstand that front line from Aura. So Onyx again conceding the Lord, conceding the kills towards Ludpi. Again, well played by Yaoi. Finding the clinical initiation, knowing that Harith has hit his power spike, not just the Divine Glaive, also the Holy Crystal to delete anyone. So he can choose whoever he wants. Meanwhile, hold up. That's a Nolan sent to the back by the Diversion. Oh, again, this is a tough, tough spot to be in for the Nolan too, though, because if he chooses Kabuki, I don't think he can assassinate him. Can he assassinate Iran? I don't think so. Well, not commit on towards Iran, that's for sure. And Onik, these is why, this is why I feel like Onik, they will feel okay-ish. During defense, they have a very good, a very good high ground. They have Claude, they have Luo Yi. That can definitely just clear wave fast. Mm -hmm. But at least they're using this diversion to its maximum. I mean, they're looking for flying angles. They're sending CW up top to split push. So at least they're trying to alleviate extra pressure by Aura. But again, Yaoi is just so confident moving forward. Oh, Yaoi is might be a mistake. Face checking into a four Onyx members mm. now. Oh. Diversion towards the middle. Oh my god! Kabuki with the flicker! Oh! oh. The collapse by Onyx! Now hard guard pops as well, but Kyrie will not wow. survive the fight. Kabuki! Now, looking to reposition, no immortality for Keyboard Lepi! Taken down as well as Iran, the dragon collects the double. Saving Private Kabuki, he gets jumped on, he gets engaged upon, but the hard guard was so clutch, and Kabuki now leads the charge towards the crystal. We might see a game of three, ladies and gentlemen. Aura, they did it in leg one, they might do it again in leg two. Sans and TW looking to clear, waiting for Kyrie and Keyboy. 12 seconds, will it be enough? Aura. Looking to jump on towards Sans, flickers away, CW with the blazing duet, will not be able to defend as Aura. The Red Dragons force a game three. The Red Dragons take flight. They're able to burst their fire again. And the Sky Kings humbled. They have to get ready for game number three. What a performance by Aura in Game 2. It was a statement by Onik in Game 1 and the Dragons have recovered. Onik took the 4v5 and it's so poetic how in this game every time